Hi, today I will show you all four methods of using Twixter. I'll start the tutorial with the most popular and easiest method, and then progress to the advanced method. First, create the composition as you need. I'm using a 1080p 30fps comp for this tutorial. For the easiest method, choose your clip and pre-comp the layer. Then add Twixter Pro with this setting. Now I'm hoping you already know that Anime Clips contains a lot of dead frames. Usually when we remove all those dead frames, the anime becomes around 7 FPS. So for the input frame, we will uncheck the mark and type 7. But you can change it to any value, it just depends on the anime clip you're using. But for this 7 is perfect. Now pre-comp this layer and adjust the time remapping as your needs. Select the keyframes and ECE ease them by pressing F9 in U keyboard. Open the value graph editor and adjust the graph as your need. For this, I will make the starting fast, then gradually decrease the speed. You can see it worked, but there's a lot of warp in it when you pay close attention to it. To fix this problem, we need to learn the average method, which is pretty popular these days. It includes a third-party software, Flow Frames. For this method, I want you to add a shortcut in your layer splitting shortcuts. Press Ctrl plus number zero to add the new shortcut in here. It should be easier to cut dead frames. Now press Ctrl plus right arrow key in your keyboard to move one frame forward at a time and press the recently made shortcut Ctrl plus num zero to cut whenever you get a new moving frame. When you are done finding the moving frames, select the bottom layer, then press and hold the shift key and select the top layer. Now shorten any one layer like I showed in here? Don't worry, this will shorten every selected layer until there's only one frame remains in each layer. Now right click in the selected layer and go to Keyframe Assistant, Sequence Layers, and click OK. Then again pre-comp these layers and render them. Now open Flow Frame. Simply drag and drop your rendered clip and select the X8 option, as I showed on the screen, and then interpolate it. Now bring that Flow Frame clip to your pre-comp and make sure it's fitting with the comp in the end, like I did in here. Now go outside this pre-comp and add the previous Twixter settings to it. But this time, we will use 240 FPS as input frame rate. And pre-comp this layer again to time remap this layer. I just did the same time remapping as the first method. Because time remapping is always same for any method. Here you can see, it's better than the first method, but there's still some warp. And I'm pretty sure no Twixter channel is fixing this issue. But there's a way to fix this issue. Now, I'll introduce an advanced Twixtor method I've been using for a while. It's time consuming, but perfect for achieving the best results. For the third method, you need to know where exactly things went bad. In this case, this part was warpy and can't fix by flow frame. So we will overlap a second layer on top of this part and fix this issue. Go inside this pre-comp and copy the layer where you use Twixter. Now went back to the main comp and paste the Twixter layer in here. So now I can see this part is making the warp problem because there's a big difference between both frame and artificial intelligence can't guess which part is moving where. So we will use a mask path in the Twixter layer to track the problematic part. You need to do it as precisely as possible. Take your time doing it and no need to worry about parts without keyframes for the mask path. They won't be tracked. Now go to this option of Twixter and select Mask 1 in both options. And pre-comp this layer. Now copy the time remaping keyframes from the previous flow frame layer, then paste it in the new pre-comp and trim the part which is not needed. You've successfully removed the character's body warp, but now the background is warping. To fix this, blend it with the bottom flow frame layer. So now do a simple mask around the character of the top layer and track the mask using the default After Effect Tracker. Then add an effect called Key Cleaner and change the settings like I did. You can use different settings until you get your desired result. And you're done. The warp is gone. And if you want to enhance it further, you can add more mask tracks. The tutorial is almost finished, but I want to mention the Track Points option in Twixter. It's available, but it doesn't usually give perfect results. I'll demonstrate how to use track points with a quick example. Find it at the bottom of Twixter Pro menu. Start by setting Use to Main BG Layer and keyframe the points as shown.
After keyframing the problematic areas, switch Use back to main BG layer and keyframe the side Use options as Don't Use. Now, pre-compo this and copy-paste the time remapping as we did earlier. However, you might notice it's still warping, even after using point tracking. So, my recommendation is to stick with the flow frame plus mass tracking method for the best results. So that's it for the tutorial and I hope you learned something new and helpful today. Please subscribe if you want to support me and stay creative.